It's the breaking Bitcoin uh -huh. song. All right, all right. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the great ordinals debate, uh, following history here with an important discussion about the future of Bitcoin. Uh, Pete Rizzo, editor of Bitcoin Magazine, want to lay a bit of the table setting here for why uh, we chose to have this panel. A little backdrop, what are ordinals? So ordinals is a protocol that establishes a consensus on the canonical ordering of Bitcoins and allows you to associate arbitrary data with those transactions. So I think a lot of people at home are wondering, they're seeing these thousands of script kitties, these NFTs being added to the Bitcoin blockchain, and they're saying, I didn't agree to this. I didn't update my software. Why is this happening? And why is this not an attack on Bitcoin? Shinobi. Well, uh, that's kind of a, a very nuanced thing. Uh, in some ways, it is an attack on Bitcoin. I mean, th these two are just highly regarded, and um, they, they need to act like grown men. Uh, well, we have some fighting words no, we, there. <laughs> we broke Bitcoin but, right um, now. We yeah, broke Bitcoin. It is just something you can do with the network. You can, if you pay the fee, you can post that data, whatever it is, to the mm -hmm. blockchain, and right, there's nothing to do Let's to stick with that, that word, attack. Right, so people so, are saying so this is an it's, attack it's, it's on Bitcoin. Pivot, though. Originally, this started with actual Bitcoiners just going, let's play around with this. And if you actually look around at a lot of the platforms that have been built out to trade or deal with ordinals, a lot of it is built by Bitcoin SV people. And they actually are trying to exaggerate and you know, push the use of these tools and build these platforms in a way to disrupt things on Bitcoin. It might not have started like that, but there are people who have actively attacked Bitcoin in the past, actually building a lot of the infrastructure in this Right, ecosystem. but the question is, this is the protocol itself an attack on Bitcoin? Eric, it sounds like you're being accused of attacking Bitcoin. <laughs> Shinobi, like of all the possible things that you could choose in this, in this world, why do you choose to be a block space Karen? <laughs> Oh, I don't care. You you pay, you use it, but I'm just saying that's there not are how you use Bitcoin people. though. There that's not how you use people. it. You should use Bitcoin in this particular way. That, that's that's block, that's a block space Karen. Like I don't you could be any other where, thing. Where you could did be I astral. say that, Eric? <laughs> where did I say you can't do this or don't do this? You're I think saying you're that we're doing something wrong with Bitcoin and aren't aren't you an old counterparty? No, I actually show? I described how a specific subset of people using things like ordinals are motivated to attack and disrupt Bitcoin. Right, but that's a specific nuance point. You're saying some people are using ordinals to attack Bitcoin. It's different than ordinals as an attack on Bitcoin. Matt, I'm going to throw it yeah. over to you. Ordinals, an attack on Bitcoin. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with the nuance take here. I mean, no, no, it's, no. It's, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, you know, the <laughs> throwing random crap on the blockchain, and it is random crap, let's be clear. It is not... Uh, so you're no saying, eyebrow. when you say crap, it's crap. It it's has crap. no value. There's no value here. It's like ob objective crap. It's objectively crap. What do you think about transactions from like North Korea, uh, Russia trying to bypass san sanctions? Is that like uh, objectively not crap? Objectively crap. Objectively it's crap. All crap. Okay. It's all crap. It's uh, all crap. I, I can, I, I would, if I, when I look at the block explorer, I do see mostly crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is true. Whatever. Well, let's start but, there and but, talk you know, about Bitcoin. Bitcoin's not there to like prevent you from putting your crap on the chain. Like, yeah. you know, I might not like what you put, but you, you put it there. But it is true that like BRC20 stuff, especially when we start talking about these other protocols that people are trying to layer on top of the ordinal stuff and on top of inscriptions that are designed to like have this like viral effect of gratuitously inefficient transaction construction. I mean, like ordinals and inscriptions are at least like the best transaction construction you could do for what it's trying to accomplish versus BRC20 and these other things are like, wow, we're gonna like create the most gratuitously inefficient crap we can and then try to like create a, a strong pump of mentals here and uh, create just more transaction volume by throwing money at this. Driven by, you know, BSV teams mm. is maybe a little more sketch. But some well, are yeah, looking I mean, at this as can, a- Can oh, I, real sure. quick, like BRC20 specifically, is, is just reinventing counterparty, except three times less efficient for no reason. And deliberately it's, worse. I mean, like, gratuitously yeah. worse. So, so I mean, I want to address the BRC20 thing. Before I do that, I got to say thank you, like a big thank you to two types of groups that I'm thinking about right now. The first group is, like, big thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of the laser eyes for hosting the JPEGs on their nodes. 
forever and ever. We thank you. It's, we couldn't have done this without you. Thank you. Udi, second I'm just going to prune it when I get home. Second group, I didn't hear that, I'm sorry. Second group is that I have to, I'm just looking in front of me, I'm seeing all these people wearing wizard hats. Thank you. Thank you, it means a lot. Um, about BRC20. So, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about BRC20 is, is there, there are like two ways to approach this problem, right? Some people want token on Bitcoin. Why? I honestly, I don't even know, but some people want it, right? And then you could approach this problem in two ways. You could try to plan like um, very efficient protocol, um, which some, you know, some have done this, like Lightning Labs is working on Taproot assets. Um, I know that RGB is working on their own protocol. Some people have been doing that. My you know, impression of it as an outsider is that they've been working on it for a long time, probably because they're trying to make it super efficient. It's true. I would expect that once those things are ready, maybe a lot of people will migrate there. But BRC20, the entire point was like, okay, there's this group, they want it today. So we're gonna give them something that works today. And I would not be, like, I don't think a lot of people are expecting BRC20 to survive like for, for eons, like we expect Bitcoin to, right? But we can start doing it today and then over time migrate. I think this is just as valid of an approach. People, look, people are gonna do what they want. Yeah. I don't get to decide what people do. That's not how it works. None of us get to decide that. You know, ordinals, NFTs on Bitcoin, NFTs generally, they're collectibles. People want to collect stuff. Whatever, you go collect stuff. That's cool. Uh, BRC20 isn't just like here now. It's also like counterparties here now, a bunch of other, uh, there are other systems that do exist that you could use. But BRC20 is deliberately designed to add a strong viral factor of yeah you know, the, the, the token viral factor that you have with some of the Ethereum tokens that people have created that are really designed for pumpamentals, right? They're not designed for like a token that makes sense, that has any value. They're designed to pump, right? And, and a lot of the BRC20 stuff is that way too. And it doesn't even have an on-chain decentralized DEX protocol like Counterparty did. Like what's up with that? I don't understand. Like, what, what does this have to do with me? And well, if I, can, uh, inter <laughs> if I can interject there, I think the fear here is that Right, Bitcoin, we like it, has a 21 million hard cap. It has a monetary policy. Some people may look to what's happening now that there are tokens coming on ordinals, there's tokens on the protocol and saying, look, this is undermining the things that we like about Bitcoin and that there's a real risk here. These things that are happening in cryptocurrency it's that are fraudulent, though, right? that are scams, are now going to be coming to Bitcoin and that's the nature of this as being an attack. Yeah, well, but we well, really quick, I would go a step further. It's not even about these things like NFTs coming to Bitcoin being an attack. It's an example like BRC20. Like all of the stuff people want to do with that protocol have some JPEG on chain tied to a token that represents owning it. Like those things can be done way more efficiently using a protocol so do like it. counterpart. So do like it. it works. So do it's, it. It's why there. are you sitting here complaining? So why are it. people intentionally inventing new protocols to fulfill the exact same mm. goal and intentionally making them less efficient, more encouraging of high volume traffic on the chain? Like why are you doing that instead of the logical, efficient engineering design of let's make this as compact and efficient as possible. The like, best, why? as someone who's worked on Bitcoin for a long time, the best engineering design never wins. <laughs> yeah. The best engineering designs just, it, it's all about who creates the most pumpamentals. It's all about who, I mean, who honestly, markets the best. It's all about. Yeah, and honestly, the, if, the efficient way that counterparty people were doing NFTs before was putting Web2 links to the images uh, that they were pointing to, you can go on and try to look at some of those county party NFTs today. All of those links are broken. Imgur just made it a policy that their service cannot be used for NFTs. So if you go and try to look up counterparty NFTs today, like half of them don't even lead anywhere. Yeah, so Eric, yeah, we want to put the data you, on the blockchain. You can point a, a, a counterparty like link or reference point to an inscription on chain. There's already proposals, maybe even merged at this point. <laughs> it's like you, you, you can tie a counterparty token to inscriptions. There's no magical monopoly or thing requiring you to use schemes like ordinals or BRC20 to associate a token I mean, with let's, an inscription. Let's differentiate, right? Like if your goal is to put the image on the chain 
ordinals and inscriptions is about the best protocol you could come up with to do that. It's the most efficient way you could do that. If your goal is, I want exactly. to the image. So that doesn't make any sense. Now, BRC20, on the other hand, is the most gratuitously inefficient protocol you can come up yeah, with but the, the, for the particular call. Yeah, but the BRC20, look, all me, all me and Udi, so what is, why is the reason that we are here? Let's go through because the timeline. Because we line. broke Bitcoin. <laughs> all right, well, let's actually, let's actually, let's actually yeah, go through the timeline of the things that have everything. happened here, like in the Bitcoin <laughs> protocol. Uh, small blockers, 2017, and uh, Peter Woolley imp implemented segregated witness. Uh, Peter Woolley, Gregory Maxwell, Andrew Polstra, uh, Andrew Polstra invented Taproot. Those two upgrades together made ordinal inscriptions possible. All you laser eye maxis in this crowd were the ones that were shearing for Taproot. Now, all me and Udi did was to put some wizard pictures on the blockchain that, by the way, exist in the witness data of transactions, which means that they're the most prunable data form that you could possibly have. If you're trying to uh, sync a Bitcoin node that is full of wizard pictures, it's going to take you way faster to sync that node because you don't even have any signatures or any, like it's just a raw data blob that you don't even have to validate. So if the, if the Bitcoin blockchain is full of wizard pictures, it's actually faster to run a node. So how are we bloating anything? And if your problem is that the block size is too big, what are the consensus rules for? You're supposed to set the consensus rules for, uh, for what you want in Bitcoin at the consensus layer. So all your nodes decide how big should the blocks be. That's, that's your full nodes that are deciding that. We didn't change the consensus rules of Bitcoin. You guys soft forked in, segwit, taproot, and made all of this ordinal wow. nonsense possible. We're just making wizards with it. That are we were against it. it. We didn't want taproot. We said it was stupid. We, we were <laughs> the ones that, would say that they were saying that it was stupid. But don't, don't we, know. as we people who are, who care about Bitcoin, don't we have to take the best uh, interest road to protect it, right? We're talking about the blockchain right now in terms of the size, the UTX sets, O set are bloating. Shouldn't we take action to prevent there are that? Limits, there are limits on Look, the block size for a reason, in order to not let it, you know. Yeah, but we're not bloating the UTXO set. The uh, inscription number 652, that was one UTXO that covered an entire block. Right, but we know that block space is a scarce resource. We know that we'll be running Bitcoin in 100 years, right? So now that these wizard pictures are on the blockchain, somebody is going to have to validate that picture in 100 years. Yeah, so we're I would building for a picture. future that is potentially hundreds of years out. Yeah. So I think some people are naturally concerned and they're saying, hey, there's more efficient ways of doing things. Why are you not encouraging them to do those more so when you look, things when you look at a, inefficient when you look at a, When you look at a blockchain 10 years from now, and you look at the history, and you look at the history of the ledger in this year, I think that it's going to be a lot more interesting to look at a few pictures of Tapu Wizards than look at transactions of people buying tickets to Bitcoin Magazine. It's just more historically significant. It's, it's useful. It's great. People are paying for it, so it means they value it. I think it's awesome. Every transaction that you do, Thank you. Look, Every transaction that you do is subjective, but the this, the type of wizards are objectively great. <laughs> so, the, you know. The wizard, Wait, I, the wizard pictures are not bloating the chain. It's making it easier to sync a node. Well, you guys like to see, dig up history, See, guys, right? we're going into the weeds here, where I, I asked, and I think Matt was trying to get at the same point, like you have a protocol like BRC20 to issue tokens. Yeah, but we didn't if invent you want, BRC20s. If you want we didn't invent that. Bitcoin you guys with token and SegWit like made that fine. possible. We just inspired no, 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 a bunch Eric, of wizards. So why when that massive inefficiency for that goal, where if that's what you want to use Bitcoin for, if that's your goal, fine. But why are you just not saying anything about people doing it in the dumbest, most efficient way possible? Well, You're not offering any positive we, we contribution. We, we, we do, actually. Any kind of direction look, or nudging look, towards do. more efficient you designs don't, you don't, you don't, or more efficient ways to do we that. We do that, You're though. just sitting no. here joking and clowning about look, how you don't, you don't know what's going on. Isn't you don't that know, hilarious? Look, you don't know what's going on in the behind the scenes. Me and Udi are working on a system for making BRC20 uh, tokens not bloat the UTXO set as much. We want to aggregate all of those into a different uh, uh, representation that don't require a specific UTXO for each BRC20. So we are working on that. We're doing that. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? <laughs> what you did, what you guys did was uh, make in uh, outrageous claims about the awesomeness of SegWit and Taproot, and now that's the reason why we have t uh, BRC20 tokens. We're thinking about ways to clean that what, up. What you outrageous guys are just sitting claims? Here what outrageous claims? Segwit enabled Lightning. Like you literally could not have a payment channel and then that would and route then lightning both ways broke, without then light Segwit. Lightning broke. Taproot is actually scaling multi-sig 
and laying the foundations for privacy on Lightning so why in I, ways that couldn't have been done before. So, why am I so just, what, what do you mean? Let me reset like, the floor here. We just had a presidential candidate debut on stage. The kind he's a couple wizard too, by the way. He, he the, DM'd me last night and he asked if we can get a couple wizard. Issues, I told him to take a shower. The kind of issues okay, that he is talking about, <laughs> uh, the truckers in Canada, people under financial censorship, these are the things that I think people are concerned are going to get priced out of the blockchain as people start to add these images. But that doesn't, that, there's no, pricing something out of the blockchain, Bitcoin fundamentally only works if miners get paid, right? And we've, we've been hearing for years since before SegWit, since the block size wars, we've been here for years, like it's, oh, it's too early. It's too early. We don't need, we can't have fees yet because uh, you know, it, it, Bitcoin just needs to grow a little more, and then we'll have fees. We'll have fees eventually. At some point, we need the freaking fees. And the biggest issue but that with Tapper like Wizard is they're, they're putting like images in there once. behavior in order to get something that you want. How is that not the case? Sorry, I didn't. It sounds like you're justifying bad behavior no, in order I to mean, get something that you look, want. Look, people want to collect stuff. There's, what's what's BRC twenty is. You know, here's bad behavior where people are like just promoting pumpy crap and like funding bloating the blockchain with a deliberate goal of that, bloating the UTXO set, doing things that legitimately slow down full nodes that cause issues. When we're talking about like inscriptions, like, you know, you're only putting the images in there once. It really sucks. Like, why is your protocol too efficient? You're not paying the miners enough. This sounds, it's really frustrating. This sounds it doesn't exactly, have staying power. This sounds exactly like environmentalists complaining about mining being inefficient. It's efficient to us, okay? <laughs> it is. It's efficient to us, and it's a subjective thing. And if it's not objective, it's not efficient for you, don't do it, you know? Do something else. I fully support the idea of coming up with other protocols, but I think the issue with Bitcoin culture in the last two, three years is that people decided that instead of building, they can just go on podcasts and complain, and that that will somehow fix the situation, but it does not. The only way to fix it is to build. No, I'm getting very good at complaining. <laughs> Come on. I'm good at it too. I'm good at it too. Look, this is, this look. is after years of complaining that I'm, <laughs> that I'm doing this. 2017. Uh, Bitcoin was primarily used to transfer uh, Bitcoin between shitcoin exchanges for leverage trading and on uh, getting on BitMEX and Poloniex. That activity drove the fees in Bitcoin up to above $20. Uh, it made the uh, user fees pay more than what the mining subsidies are. Gregory Maxwell, who I think most of us in this audience probably respected a huge amount, uh, said, personally, I'm popping champagne right now. I'm celebrating that we have sufficient demand and activity in the block space for, uh, to sustain the protocol uh, without having uh, subsidies and inflation in the system. That was celebration worthy. That was champagne popping worthy. And the activity that was driving it was centralized shitcoin trading. Now, what we're doing with wizards are pre-signed Bitcoin transactions, non-custodial uh, exchange using the Bitcoin layer itself, that is now driving up the activity and we're getting back to those fee levels. Why is it all of a sudden a bad thing now when we're doing something non-custodial? There's See, a very that, that was a transitory frenzy during the peak of a bull market and it came back down. Like even this latest whatever the hell token on BRC20, it was a transitory frenzy and it came back down. So you don't like, want Ultimately you don't want what you're talking you about with this bad, we like, need it to stay up. All you're talking about with schemes like ordinals and inscriptions they're associated with are collectibles. Collectibles markets are not like gold. They're not like actual financial markets. Mm. There becomes a, a frenzied cultural obsession with a specific thing, and it pumps. So you're saying and it's a fad. It you're saying it's a fad. Why are you worried about it? So it How much volume you got, do you think you the entire about? crypto yeah, kitty yeah, ecosystem is going to have <laughs> last, no, last <laughs> week? How much trading volume do you think there was for the entire crypto kitty ecosystem? I why do you care about it then if it's going $6, away? $6,000. So why do you, why do you why care do you, about you, it? Well, no, I'm bringing this up because you guys, argue against it if it's gonna you guys are literally months. trying to paint this as like some driver of security revenue for miners. Worst case, it's right. But you're security. ignoring the worst transitory case, nature security. of that. That's the worst case. It's driving up the security. If it's so not, then why are we having this discussion? I, I want to mention one other thing that's maybe a, a little more uh, nuanced and maybe getting a little bit too much into the weeds. But you know, you mentioned like decentralized exchanges for uh, Taproot Wizards for other Bitcoin ordinals and other systems on Bitcoin, and I think that's actually very dangerous. Um, that's so, what dangerous? 
it, it's very dangerous because it introduces uh, Mevil or the, the evil version of MEV on, on Bitcoin in a potentially material way. Can you zoom and, out, maybe just introduce that MEV? Yeah, so, so let, me, let me explain what, what MEV is, and then we'll talk about Mevil. Um, so, so MEV is, is minor extractable value, right? It, it's just like how do miners get the most value out of their ability to select which transactions go on the block and in what order they go on the block. Um, this is great. You know, we, we have to pay miners. We pay them fees. That's why it exists. That's how Bitcoin keeps its 21 million cap is we pay miner this, miners the fees. And so we pay them. Great. They need to exist. But the issue becomes when, uh, the issue comes around when if uh, miners have to run materially complicated software and have to hire a team of engineers and a team of highly qualified engineers who are well paid and very expensive in order to get the most value out of their block in order to be competitive, then that becomes a very strong centralization pressure in mining. Right? And so we've seen this in Ethereum, right, where you have whatever, it, it peaked at I think 80% of blocks were OFAC compliant because there were in fact only one or two organizations that were selecting transactions for the blocks because in Ethereum you have this problem to the extreme. And it really is only practical to get the most value for your transaction selection if you hire a team of highly competent, highly paid engineers and have them work on this problem for years. Um, and so this causes a, a strong centralization pressure and, and can introduce censorship. And so my biggest concern about all of this stuff is do we end up introducing Mevil? And I, I, I worry very much about that. Matt, I'm so glad that you brought that up because I, honestly, that's my main concern as well. And I've been harping about that for several months now that, yeah, I mean, uh, we are in a situation now where if, if the... Um, if ordinals have productized the block space in Bitcoin, that it can be repurposed into any arbitrary protocol, one of the biggest buyers for that block space are going to be the same things that you see on Ethereum and other, on other chains. So we are bringing back the world of problems of MEV into this. But what I'm, the reason that I'm doing this and the reason that I think you know, that what we're doing with Wizards is not, a, it's not a bad thing is because if we have a problem with MEV that is now inherent in the Bitcoin system, Shouldn't we fuck around with that as much as we possibly can to make sure that we can battle test the, pro the, the protocol so that we come up with mitigation strategies for that? Or should we just have that risk latent in the protocol so then when mass adoption comes, then we're like, oh, by the way, we, we had SegWit and Taproot and now we have infinite MEV in the protocol that we don't even know how to deal or face with because we didn't take care of it before. So what we're trying to do now is like pushing that, accelerating that uh, problem. And frankly, I'm, 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 I'm scared for Bitcoin right now because we have been ignoring the rest of the Ethereum space for years. We don't know the first thing about MEB. You know when Rollkit deployed their um, uh, sovereign roll up on top of Bitcoin? I saw you in the GitHub repo and you were telling them, hey, why can't we just randomize the transaction order? Look, any people in the Ethereum space that have done anything with MEB knows that Randomizing the transaction order is not like a viable strategy to combat MEV because you invalidate a bunch of other transactions and also a miner can just choose not to include those specific transactions. So that's like, that's like the first idea. When someone sees MEV, they're like, oh, maybe I just randomized the transaction order. I we, tried, we, we had that idea like six years in Ethereum and basically our current you know, Bitcoin engineers, they don't have the first fucking clue how to deal with MEV and that's what we got to take on this problem right now so that we can get you guys up to speed there's, with like five years that you have been missing. There's, That's uh, why we got to do this now. So th th there's, it is important to differentiate between MEV and MEVIL, right? It's important to differentiate between paying miners, so protocols which, you know, uh, cost substantial block space but pay them directly via fees, right? No problem with that. That's great. Um, and that's, that's how the protocol is designed to work. The, you know, it is important that miners have very high MEV. It is very important, however, that figuring out how to maximally extract that MEV is, is cheap and easy and efficient and well understood and broadly accessible, right? And so that's what this is the problem we have in Ethereum. And you know there are ways to do it. So you can, uh, you know, randomizing the order isn't helpful, but uh, randomizing based on the next box hash is, right? So you can you can use uh, force miners to, to throw away blocks if they want to randomize, which is obviously very expensive and thus kind of counteracts it. Um, so there are protocols we can do, and, and to, to some extent this kind of issue is on the technical community, right? So it's on the engineers building stuff to take these countermeasures when they consider the protocols they're designing and 
build something that isn't going to have these problems. And, and you but have now, seen this trend you agree, in Ethereum too. Wouldn't you, you agree that in order to learn how to build those protocols and those applications without leading to bad MEV, wouldn't you agree that in order to get there, we need to start building and experimenting? And probably the first protocols will not be MEV optimized, will probably have some problems with them, and that's how we learn. Maybe, but I thought the point about learning from the Ethereum space was great because the Ethereum space has spent a lot of time doing this. And in fact, they, so they don't necessarily have a concern with, with having MEV in the protocol, but MEV also fundamentally enables miners to front run, to do other things and, and extract value from your protocol in a way that you might not have wanted, right? You might not have wanted the miners to extract that value. You might have wanted to have that value or pay that to some other scheme in your protocol, some other entity in your protocol, whatever it is. And so they have learned a lot over the years about how to build uh, protocols that, you know, might, that, that kind of simplify that structure and formalize that structure and say like, all right, we're gonna have this de uh, decentralized exchange and we're gonna have a private relay with the, the miners or the stakers and we're gonna explicitly give them some portion of the MEV and we're gonna make that a fu fundamental part of our protocol. And so we do need to learn from that world insofar as we're building protocols that start to look more like that world. We absolutely do. Well, I mean, like Matt, I mean, I would, I mean, your, your overall point I agree with, but I would kind of disagree in comparing the severity of like MEV we've seen on Ethereum with what's possible now on Bitcoin with things like ordinals. Like you're talking to the difference between- You have no idea what's going on with Ethereum. You are talking the difference- You're just complaining Udi, about Ethereum Udi, all day. You have Udi, no idea sir, what's going on. Sir, How stop can you yelling. disagree? Udi, stop yelling. Okay. Well, um, like the, it's the difference between a PSBT or a set of PSBTs where you just do some summing math of like, if I buy this, do I make a profit versus on Ethereum, a complex web of all these on-chain decentralized exchange protocols, all the interactions between them and trying to map out all of that. Like the, the computational complexity for a miner to deal with the type of like Mavic like opportunities that you have on Bitcoin because of what's going on with these token protocols, ordinals, and inscriptions now, it's nowhere even close to the complexity But you can build a so we're, we're, build, we're literally building sovereign roll-ups on Bitcoin right now that are going to introduce exactly those problems. No, you're not, Eric. Yeah, but you're building a commitment to a sovereign roll-up with no trustless peg that can actually go in and out of uh, that. You're just like meaningless. A sovereign roll-up can have trustless pegs between uh, BRC20 tokens. The roll-ups design, the modern roll-up designs in Ethereum have largely solved the MEV issue as well, right? Like the roll -up, modern roll-up designs in Ethereum have formalized the concept of extracting value and giving it to the people managing the, the, the entities managing the roll up or sorting transactions within the roll up and then committing to that on Ethereum, right? So they've also largely solved the issue of having miners be able to extract substantial value in an easy way out of the roll up by reordering the roll up. Yeah, so I gotta just say an observation. You know, the last couple of years in Miami, if you've come to this conference and looked at the main stage, I think you would have seen a lot of like talks about, you know, macro, a lot of talks about, um, you know, how Bitcoin is gonna save El Salvador, a lot of this stuff on repeat. Actually, if you look at YouTube on a, on a speak, on a talk from Bitcoin conference, and you don't look at the subtitle, you will not know from which year it is because every year it's the exact same thing. But this time, <laughs> Oof. we're on stage, on the main stage of Bitcoin Magazine talking about roll-ups, we're talking about MEV, we're talking about decentralized exchanges on Bitcoin. I don't have the answers, I don't think Eric has them, but I think, I think the culture is getting there. Udi, you know I've ranted about half of those things for like five years now, and you just ignore me and refuse to engage and act like a, a goofball troll. Sir. Guys, I want to zoom out from the technical specifics for a second, countering some of these claims. Uh, don't we know, you argue that we haven't been paying attention to what's been happening in Ethereum, the crypto ecosystem. There's going to be people on the stage later who are talking about all the ramifications, all the crashes. I mean, don't we have to be somewhat concerned about bringing this ecosystem and which we've seen almost no value creation coming over to Bitcoin. How does this not end in the next cycle with the same crashes that we saw in the crypto ecosystem coming to Bitcoin? And how is that a positive? I'm deeply concerned. I am deeply concerned. That's why I want to stress test these systems right now so that when we have the next country after El Salvador, the chain isn't going to be broken because uh, people are doing other side mints of land. I want the Bitcoin ecosystem to learn to how to adopt MEV mitigation strategies. I want, right now, the reason that I got into Bitcoin was because it used to be the, the intellectual center of the world, basically. You said that. That is no longer the case. 
the intellectual conversations that I see, that I've been seeing at this conference for years now, but are, have been so subpar that I don't feel confident that you guys even have the first clue how to uh, do MEB mitigation strategies. Mm. But there have been ethical conversations here, and you could argue that there haven't been ethical conversations at the other conferences. They are maybe not thinking as deeply about the second or third order effects of the things that they're building, and that's part of the reason that they have built the things they've built. I think, you know, so people are saying Bitcoin is supposed to be safe against nation state attacks. If they aren't even safe against me and Uri fucking around, then what the fuck is the purpose of this entire fucking conference, or this entire project? Um, I think the idea of comparing a high fee spike because of JPEGs getting traded around to a nation state attack is kind of completely silly and uh, just not even close to reality. And by the way, like things like roll-ups for other tokens or we system agree. using Look, inscriptions, like a roll-up that does not have any interaction with the native Bitcoin token in a trustless way, it's for all these second layer tokens, that does absolutely nothing to help the next El Salvador that actually tries to start using Bitcoin. It scales the shit coins. It doesn't help scale their use of Bitcoin. I'm glad you care so much about the population of El Salvador. That seems to be your thing on Twitter. <laughs> You know, All right, guys, we're on final thoughts. We got, a, we got a beeping red light You're here. You're a counterparty shield. You're a counterparty shield. You used to do the exact same thing with counterparty. That's the fuck, most hypocritical little thing I've ever heard in my entire fucking life. I just want to end with, uh, I want to end with a final thought. Look, I think Bitcoin is changing, and I think it's important to have an adaptive mental model of what Bitcoin is. I want to thank everyone for listening, and thank you guys for having this debate. The important thing is that no one was hurt. Let's keep it that way. Well, give it There's a second. Still we still have to go backstage. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Bitcoin 2023. This is the Bitcoin Magazine Live Desk brought to you by Marathon. We just heard the great ordinal debate. Was it a great debate? Was it a great debate? I Was think it a great it's, debate? it's hard to say. So, Josh, <laughs> Not at all. Let me hear. Let me stop hear. listening. I, I have no idea. Hold on. We got Josh it, from Blue Collar uh, Podcast. Blue Collar Bitcoin. Yep. Blue Collar Bitcoin uh, Podcast. We got Rob Warren from uh, Distributed Hash, and we've got Ben uh, BTC Sessions. Yeah. Um, what I saw there was a group of clowns dressed in wizard costumes talking about you know stones, JPEGs that they're selling on Bitcoin. It didn't do a thing to move me in any direction that I think is actually feasible or matters for this entire concept. We were, we're listening to RFK talk about world-changing events, and then we watched a group of people talk about selling rocks on Bitcoin. It's, uh, it's kind of mind-blowing, and, um, and Bitcoin's, Bitcoiners fretting about this is ridiculous as well, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. we are, we're talking about free markets here. Let the free market decide. Let's let these guys load the uh, miners up with as much Bitcoin as they can. Let's take all their money and they're going to run out and they're going to be done with this anyway. This is just, I, I think it's probably a pretty dull fad. And, and Rob, you listen to a lot of the MEV, the Miner Extracted Value Talk. Well, as someone who's from that space, what do you have to say about the way they handled it? So as a miner, I, I am more than appreciative of having anybody who is willing to spend excessive amounts of money on doing ridiculous things, um, participating in the network. The biggest thing about this is that this is an adversarial network, not just in the cultural sense, as you see guys dressed like Junior Varsity Gandalf trying to show <laughs> their new thing. Um, but furthermore, on the actual operational sense, it's supposed to live in a Nash equilibri e equilibrium, I'm sorry, where everyone understands what the sort of core strategy is to do, is to optimize the way in which you hash to have the biggest blocks, to have the largest fees. And that's what you do as a miner. You don't dictate the way that people run the chain per se. You are there as a very selfish actor. And I've never heard a miner say the term MEV. We're building blocks and we're working on more important things like the Stratum Protocol, Stratum V2. We're decentralizing the network. We're expanding the stand-up of actual hash rate all across the world, whether it's air-cooled or immersion or hydro. We couldn't be less concerned about this. So as my friend on my left here, Reiterated, we are more than happy to take your money while you are playing around with your adventures here, here. in the ecosystem. Uh, but we're just going to keep hashing. And BT Sessions, you're, you're someone who has a, a real pulse on the pleb culture. Did it speak to you this? was What were we dealing no, with? I, I mean, I'm kind of sad that I had to sit and watch this one, to be <laughs> honest. It's like, oh, okay, great. Anyways, uh, honestly, the econom uh, economic incentives will work themselves out over time. Fees were always going to go up. I, like, I think the whole Ordinals thing, all the BRC20 stuff is, is stupid. Um, 
I think it will go away. Uh, I want to give a shout out to a buddy of mine, Madex. He's an artist, a, a physical artist, and he made a really beautiful metaphor uh, when I was smoking a cigar with him in a hot tub. And uh, he said, you know, it kind of reminds me of going to Burning Man. They build these huge structures, and within arm's reach, everybody can scrawl all kinds of shit all over the wall and graffiti it up, and it's ugly and it's hideous. But at a certain point, nobody can reach any higher. And you see the beautiful structure for what it is. And it's also the same with the Pyramids of Giza. You know, people will scrawl shit if they can get close enough down to the bottom. But the further you look up, uh, the more pristine it is. And I think that's going to be how Bitcoin is. Right now, fees are low enough. People can do a ton of dumb shit. You're going to see dick butt on the blockchain. But eventually, Bitcoin will continue to proliferate. It will get expensive and... Somebody will think once or twice before they put a dick butt on the blockchain for an, a massive amount of sats. Well, we're going to be hearing more about interesting things miners can do beyond just MEV to increase their role <laughs> in the economy. Thank you, Miami, for the last three years in this amazing city. The whole world shut down, but Miami welcomed us with open arms. We want to show Bitcoin to the whole world. We are taking the conference on the road to set the stage for Bitcoin in a new city. Nashville. Bitcoin 2024 is coming to Nashville in Tennessee. A city that is known as a music and freedom city. Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville from July 25th to 27th.